where we export goods. We don't just import goods. Where we create jobs here at home. Where we make it easier for, for somebody with a good idea to start a business or patent an invention. We don't want to keep on giving tax breaks to corporations that ship jobs overseas. We want to give tax breaks to companies that are investing right here in Illinois. Right here in the Midwest. All across America. Investing in small businesses and American manufacturers. And clean energy companies. We don't want solar panels and wind turbines and electric cars made in Asia or in Europe, we want them made here in America by American workers. That's the choice in this election. We see an America where every citizen has the skills and the training to compete with any worker in the world. We can't allow other countries to outpace us when it comes to math and science. At our college graduation rates, we used to be number one in college graduation rates. We used to be number one in math and number one in science, and now we're ninth in college graduation rates. 21st in math, 25th in science. That's not acceptable. And that's why we, over the last two years, made historic investments in education. That's why we set a goal. By 2020, we are going to be number one again in the proportion of college graduates. And we didn't just talk about it, we put our money where our mouth was. And we stopped providing subsidies to the big banks and poured tens of billions of dollars into student loans and Pell Grants to make college more affordable for students all across this country. Billions of young people are seeing college more affordable because of the actions we took. And now we've got the other side saying that to pay for a $700 billion tax cut that would go to the top 2%, the wealthiest 2%, they want to cut education by 20%. That makes no sense. It makes no sense. Do you think China's cutting back education spending by 20%? Do you think Germany is cutting back education spending by 20%? Those countries aren't playing for second place. And we don't play for second place. This is the United States of America. We play for first place. That's the choice in this election. That's what this election's all about. That's why we have to continue to provide assistance to young people going to college. That's why we have to renew the tax credit, we've instituted $10,000 per young person who's going to college for four years so that they're not loaded down with a mountain of debt. And they can aspire to anything that their imagination leads them to. That's what this election is about. Look, this election is also about not leaving a mountain of debt for the next generation. The other side talks a good game about deficits, except you will recall that the last time they were in charge, they took record surpluses from a Democratic president and left record deficits that I inherited. And so when we make decisions about deficits, we're not going to do it on the shoulders, on the backs of students or seniors or veterans or the vulnerable. We're going to make sure that we do it in a sensible way that shares sacrifices. We're going to go out to those deficits, but we're going to do it in a way that's fair and reflects the need to grow this economy over the long term. And that's what this election is about. And this election is making sure that we don't turn the keys back to the special interests in Washington. You know, when, when we passed health care reform, let me tell you something. that because all across this country there were folks, hard-working folks, who paid their insurance premiums and then suddenly found insurance companies dropping them when they got sick. Or folks who were working hard and wanted to get insurance but had a pre-existing condition and couldn't get it. 
And so we said, anybody in America, anybody in America who is working hard, who's doing the right thing, they shouldn't go bankrupt when they get sick. And so we passed a law that made sure that insurance companies could no longer drop you when you got sick. We passed a law that said everybody under the age of 26 could stay on their parents' health insurance. We passed a law to make sure that 30 million folks can get affordable, accessible insurance, and we did it in a way that will reduce our deficit by over a trillion dollars. And now the other side, the other side says they want to roll that back. Boom! The same thing is true for financial reform. We just went through the worst crisis since the 1930s. And so we passed a bill that says you can't be cheated by your credit card company. They can't jack up your rates for no reason. That we're not going to have taxpayer bailouts again. And they said their number one priority, they, they want to roll this back. So look, we've got a lot of work to do, not only to move the country forward, but to make sure that the progress we've made continues. And we need to work together. Democrats and Republicans to get it done. But I've got to tell you, the other side, right now, they're feeling kind of cocky. And they don't see it that way. The Republican leader of the House says that, quote, this is not a time for compromise. The Republican leader of the Senate said that his main goal over the next two years, his number one priority, is to beat me in the next election. He didn't say his number one priority was put more people back to work, help more small businesses succeed. It wasn't to reduce the deficit. His top priority was to win the next election. We haven't even finished this election yet. But that's the kind of cynicism we're fighting. That's the kind of politics that we decided to change in this country. The kind of politics that puts scoring points ahead of solving problems. And that's where you come in. And I want to speak not just to Chicago, I want to speak to everybody in Illinois. 